All right, good afternoon. The Secretary General today announced the appointment of Joyce Masua of Tanzania as the Deputy Executive Director of the UN Environment Program. She succeeds Ibrahim Kyo of Mauritania, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his dedicated service and leadership during his tenure. Ms. Masuya has, since 2017, served as an advisor to the World Bank Vice President, East Asia and Pacific Region. She brings to the position more than 20 years of extensive experience in the field of international development, spanning corporate strategy, operations, knowledge management, and partnerships with diverse assignments in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Her bio is available in our office. Turning to Ebola, the World Health Organization and its partners are supporting the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo in preparing to vaccinate high-risk populations against Ebola. Health workers operating in the affected areas are being vaccinated today, and community outreach has started to prepare the ring of vaccination. The Deputy Secretary, uh, excuse me, the Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General in the DRC, Kim Bolduk, was in, in Mbandaka today, along with the Minister of Health, to witness the launching of the vaccination program. More than 7,500 doses of vaccines have been deployed to conduct vaccination in northwest Ecuador province, where 46 suspected, probable, and confirmed Ebola cases and 26 deaths have been reported as of 18 May. Most of the cases are in Bikoro, a remote rural town where four confirmed cases are in, in, in Bandaka, the provincial capital, with a population of over one million people. The World Health Organization has sent special vaccine carriers, which can keep their contents in sub-zero temperature for up to a week, and has set up freezers to store the vaccines in, in Bandaka and Bikoro. The organization is also deploying both Congolese and Guinean experts to build the capacities of local health workers. WHO and its partners need $26 million for the Ebola response in the DRC over the next three months. And the UN mission in the country, MINUSCO, is also operating flights between Mbandaka and Bikoro, setting up a logistical base in Mbandaka Airport and supporting the establishment of the emergency operations with IT and communications support. Back here, the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Libya, Hassan Salame, briefed the Security Council this morning. He told the members of the Council that the national conference meetings, which have spanned the country without a single security incident, some points of consensus have also begun to crystallize, he said, including a yearning for a united and sovereign nation, a belief that to achieve this, the state must do more, do more to be decentral, must be more decentralized, or an urgent need for a fair distribution of public resources, and a strong desire for unified state institutions, and a call for elections which can unite the country. Mr. Salame said this is why the advancement of the political uh, process is so vital and the core of the public mood is a strong desire for renewal in the political <coughs> sense. Ms. The assertion of local power and a return to a more normal life with more regular institutions, but he said that while elections must be held as soon as possible, the proper conditions must be in place. A new round of voter registration, prior commitment to accept the results, and appropriate funds and strong security arrangements are also needed. Mr. Salame called for the support from council members, noting that when Libya hears conflicting messages, it only adds to the division and gives an opportunity to those who seek it to derail the process. And our humanitarian colleagues inform us that between, inform us that between 15 and 19 May, more than 4,400 of some 44,000 displaced people in collective sites in rural Damascus reportedly returned to eastern Ghouta. They had been displaced since March when the military operations resulted in mass displacement. The humanitarian situation inside eastern Ghouta remains dire. Most of those in the area rely on humanitarian assistance from their basic needs. The area visited by the UN uh, on May 14th showed widespread destruction of civilian infrastructure, shelter interventions, and other non-food humanitarian assistance are urgently needed to support returnees, those who did not leave eastern Ghouta. The UN is providing support through the Syrian Arab Red Crescent, but stands ready to deliver humanitarian assistance to eastern Ghouta as soon as access is granted to it by the Syrian authorities. Also, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, says that the Yarmouk camp in Damascus lies today in ruins, with hardly a single building that has not been destroyed or damaged. The fighting had been particularly intense in the last month and more. 
Almost all of the Palestine refugees who were there have now fled. This just points to the need for UNRWA's emergency appeal for Syria to be fully funded. And yesterday, the head of the African Union UN hybrid operation in Darfur, Jeremiah uh, Mambabolo, concluded a two-day visit to oversee programs to establishment of the mission's temporary operating base in Golo in Jebel Mara. More information online. And our humanitarian colleagues tell us that tropical cyclone Sagar made landfall in Somalia and Djibouti this weekend, resulting in rainfall and dangerous flash flooding. They estimate that tens of thousands of people have been impacted and at least 16 deaths have been reported. In Somalia, the UN and its partners are working with the government to the most affected communities to provide food, water, sanitation, supplies, and other uh, and shelter, as well as other things. However, OCHA said that Somalia's humanitarian response plan remains significantly underfunded, and this will obviously impact our ability to deliver aid. In Mogadishu today, the UN and the government launched an $80 million appeal to help those impacted by the flood. This is part of the broader 1.5 million appeal made earlier this year. And in Djibouti, a flooding caused uh, by the cyclone affected some, some 30,000 people living mostly in Djibouti city and Balbala. And in Afghanistan, um, the UN Office for Drugs and Crime today released a survey which says that opium cultivation in the country reached a record high last year. In 2017, an estimated 328,000 hectares of opium were cultivated, up to 63%, compared to 200, 201,000 hectares in 2016. The agency warned that the record opium production creates multiple challenges in Afghanistan and its neighbors and many other countries of transition or destination for Afghan opiates. It fuels instability, insurgency, and increases funding of terrorist groups. The, uh, the report is online. Also over the weekend, we issued a statement uh, in which the Secretary General condemned the, re the attacks that had taken place in Jalalabad. And um, we also issued statements on the plane crash in Cuba and the situation in the Western Sahara. Uh, tomorrow, after the daily briefing, there'll be a press conference organized by the permanent mission, observer mission of the Holy See to the UN entitled Cops and clergy working together to fight trafficking. Um, speakers will include Vincent uh, Cardinal Nichols of Westminster, the president of the Santa Marta Group, the UK uh, anti slavery commissioner, Kevin Hyland, and the Argentine federal police general, Commissioner Nestor Ronca Roncalia. Um, and today we say thank you to uh, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Vanuatu and Vietnam, who have paid their budget dues in full, which brings us up to 98, since none of you are paying attention. Um, was it something I said, Yassine? It's nice to have you for a few seconds. All right. I'm sure there's a better show someplace else. Let's go. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, does the Secretary General have any uh, reaction to the elections in Venezuela and the response that other countries in the region are uh, giving to those? Sure. Um, the Secretary General has taken note of the results of the presidential elections in Venezuela. Obviously, beyond the current uh, political conjuncture, the Secretary General remains concerned about the current situation in Venezuela as the major challenges continue to severely affect the welfare and livelihoods of its people. He calls on political actors to address these challenges urgently within the framework of respect for the rule of law and human rights. Um, you know, as far as comments and recognition made by member states about the, the election, the recognition of the results of an election is a prerogative of member states. Uh, we will not comment on positions taken by individual member states in this case. Matthew. Sure. I want to ask you about another uh, election that took place uh, la uh, late last week uh, in Burundi, this re constitutional referendum. The, they've just announced the results. They said that only 3 percent of people abstained, 74 percent in favor, 19 against, which, will, which would put uh, Pierre Nkurunziza able to stay in power till 2034. Uh, and people that abstained were threatened with arrest or worse. So I wanted to know what is the UN statement on the election? Uh, referendum. You know, the uh, 
we did not have, obviously, we, we were not participating in, uh, in the elections, in the obs uh, observing or in the, in, in the running of the elections. Um, I would refer you to what the Secretary General said in his, uh, in his last report on, uh, on Burundi, in which he said there was no uh, alternative uh, to dialogue. Um, but, and as he said, it is the Burundi sovereign right to amend its, uh, its constitution. But I will leave it at that. Wait, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to compare it to your previous answer on Venezuela. Did the UN have observers there? In Venezuela? Yeah. No. So okay, and I would refer, I mean, the Secretary General's report on Burundi, I think his last report, was fairly clear-eyed and direct about his, uh, his observations uh, and his recommendations for Burundi. So I would refer you it's to that. It's a sovereign right, but it does the Secretary General believe that the, the constitutional amendments now ost uh, ostensibly passed uh, violate the spirit or letter of the Arusha agreements? Uh, again, I would refer you to... Uh, to the report, and again, uh, the Secretary General's point that there is no alternative uh, to dialogue, especially the, the ongoing <coughs> regional dialogue. Evelyn. Yes, do you by any chance have figures on the, that those 98 countries, what percentage of the anticipated payments do they comprise? Because we know the EU is 35 or 40 percent of the uh, total. That's a good question. The we'll, US we'll, uh, is 25. We'll, I'll, find, yeah. I'll find out. Uh, I mean, we can go back you. and look what the, the percentage has been paid. Mr. Bayes. The Palestinian Authority has announced that it is planning to join three new UN entities. They haven't told us publicly which ones yet. Have they told the UN privately which ones? And how concerned are you about the impact then on US funding for those agencies or entities? It's, it's a lot of hypotheticals. I think the United States has made its position clear. Um, we have not been informed, as far as I'm aware, of uh, what plans uh, the Palestinian Authority has. Uh, as you know, membership uh, in specialized agencies is, um, is, uh, is the purview of the, 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 the ruling bodies of each of those agencies. So it's a process in which the Secretary General has no uh, direct uh, authority, influence, or, or any other way. His, the Secretary General's overall position, which remains, is that the best way to solve the ongoing conflict is for direct talks uh, between the parties. Mr. Lee, let's go back. Council's meeting on, on Libya, but uh, um, Mr. Salome is, is uh, doing it by video. So I guess I'm gonna, I wanna ask you whether you're aware of reports that the residents of Derna, various organizations in Derna, had reached out to Mr. Salome as they're, according to them, being uh, besieged and attacked by General Haftar, and that the response was that he would not speak with them. It seemed uh, inc incongruous. So I would I, I've not to... seen those reports. Uh, we can. Uh, I'm happy to to check. And I want to ask you on UNEP. You just you made the announcement about the deputy, but they're whistleblowers within UNEP, or as I think Mr. Salheim calls it, UN environment. Um, say that there have been a number of irregularities, including the, the fast-tracking of Mr. Solheim's son for an internship in UNEP, his uh, travel on, on the public funds to, on a trip to China, and a failure to, to reimburse uh, uh, various parts of travel. And I wanted to know, is the Secretary General aware of any irregularities uh, if, within you know, UN any, environment? Any uh, questions related to any uh, purported OIOS investigation should be raised with them. What I can tell you on this uh, so-called uh, fast-tracking of an internship mm -hmm. is that the story is false. Um, what is important to know is that Mr. Solheim's son, who is uh, under the age of 18, took five day, undertook five days of work experience placement in uh, the UN Environment uh, Program as part of his regular school curricular activities. This is not an internship. It's a work uh, placement which is open to any the child of any staff member in any part of the UN. It's part of a, a general encouragement um, so that families understand what their, uh, their parents are, are doing. Uh, and it is very separate uh, from, in, from official internship programs. Uh, so Mrs. Solheim, from all appearances, was taking advantage of a program that's open to all staff members, I guess including I, I just, himself. Just one follow-up, and thanks a lot for that. that I mean, are you aware that, that national Kenyan staff in UNEP uh, were generally outraged by it and also believe that Mr. Solheim is seeking to move either 
in, in, in full or in part the agency out of Kenya? Uh, I'm not aware of any plans to move uh, the agency out of Kenya. As you know, the Secretary General, through a number of matters, always, in fact, investing in, uh, is investing in Kenya. But what is important to know is that I think the, the reporting, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to add some factual sure. backing uh, to reporting. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nizar. Yeah, for, for the past uh, few days, uh, the service, the uh, Easy TV service and the cable to the media has been interrupted regularly. It has become the norm that it is interrupted. Today, for example, it took more than four hours to fix it. Uh, given that this I, I'm, service... I'm, I'm, aware, I'm, I'm aware that there have been uh, issues and our colleagues in DPI and um, the... Uh, Broadcast services have been trying to fix it, but I will ask them to look at it again. Well, given that this service has been part of the master, master capital plan, or which was done only a few years ago and cost billions of dollars, how satisfied are you with what we have got? Look, they are this, like all new buildings, it's a highly wired and technical buildings. There are issues often with technology, and we're trying to fix it. Okay. Evelyn. Thank you, Steph. Um, do we now know who went to Washington and who met who? I, I see in the picture Nikki Haley was there uh, with the president, uh, Pompeo, and, uh, and Amina Mohammed. Who else went with the UN and who else was there with the... Were you there? <laughs> uh, I was there. Was the secretary general in his meeting with, uh, uh, with the president was accompanied by, uh, uh, by the deputy uh, Secretary General, and he had some staffers uh, with him. Yes, sir. Sure. I, I'm guess. Uh, st st sorry. What's sorry. The, any staffers you can mention, or what? No. no. Thank you. Okay. I, I just since we're into into into, into Easy TV, I did want to ask you this. Uh, before you left, uh, there had been this uh, 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 issue of trying to to prohibit people from going to, to covering the the photo ops, and this, that at least part of it seemed to be resolved. But by the Friday, when the Finnish Foreign Minister went, I went up and was told you cannot periscope there even though live stream it even though UNTV is filming yeah, audio you're, video. we're not we don't do live broadcast uh, from uh, from the 38th floor so we were asking you not to periscope why but what's the what's the reason and i'm asking for this i'll ask you in context let me ask you a question there was this, there was a speech given at NYU Abu Dhabi over the weekend and there's a reason for this i'm going to ask you as a free speech thing John Kerry gave a commencement speech and AP has said that it was wrong for Eight for NYU Abu Dhabi to tell them that they could not live stream it, even though NYU. Look, I, I was don't. I, 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 have, I have no no link. I guess with my Mr. question Kerry, is, Mr. with Abu Dhabi sure. or NYU. No, uh, every organization that. makes its own rules, uh, and I'm, we're asking you not to live uh, live stream or periscope. Does from that mean stairs. there'll be no editing of the UN TV video? There is no editing. Of the then what's the per Then what's the reason? 